So today we're here to consult over another process of change. In the pipeline, it's a draft care and support bill, came out in July, and the government has asked that there be a wide-ranging consultation. And that is why Oasis Care and Training Agency decided to take the decision to hold this event. Um, I think we're all in the same boat uh, in relation to this issue. And so, starting on the last Labour government, a debate began which said, look, we have a system for the NHS that is clearly uh, looked at all the time, we spend a lot of money on, we, we clearly see as a, a national jewel in the crown. Why don't we have the same for non-acute care, for social care, which can be care at home, or can be care in residential places? We need to find out practically what's going to happen. So things like welfare, what does that actually mean? The other thing that he talks about is prevention, to try to stop people before they get into the care system. It, it puts a, a responsibility on the council to, to, to ensure that some money is spent in making sure that people don't go into needing care, you know, which is great. The difficulty is we need to get stuff organised in terms of how to enable things to, to take place. The enablement is, in terms of resources, is the thing that is the hardest. And it's the stuff that we really do need to spend a lot of time on. Thank you, Councillor. Another point of view, uh, a different type of opinion. Uh, now we'd like to sort of pass it over to you. Don't feel restricted by having to ask a question. You could express your opinion, as Adol has done here. Uh, where can you see uh, this bill doesn't quite address those things where we haven't quite got it right with social care? And I'll be the first to admit we have, we're not right all the way there yet, even with all this bill. And also pick up on some of these things about the practicalities. It's one thing to have policy out there, but unless the people who've got to deliver that policy know how to do it, and you are the practitioners, remember, um, what ch will the, the good things in this bill get watered down a little? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Fumi Amadou. I represent that of trainers. So how can we then be concerned that people have been empowered or people have been enabled? Because if we are giving them what we can afford, ultimately we are removing their choices away from them and they are being disempowered. If I have to pay for my own care after working here for 40, 45 years, I think I should have got three houses because I have two sons. <laughs> one is going away. If I have got only one house, I'm in trouble. The uh, workforce development and paying for training and so on and stuff is not in the bill. Uh, one of the problems with social care has been a combination of poor training and poor wages. And they go together. Apple made the point that obviously, uh, I mean, his important point was, uh, will we be able to make sure that the new system can give people um, equal opportunities for high quality care irrespective of their circumstances and of the financial pressures on local authorities? And I think there is a real issue in the social care sector between the competition between international American or it could be French companies or it could be British companies. It seems to me so that the commissioning authority should not be driven only into the arms of one or two national providers. Quality doesn't always come better in the public sector than the private sector. However, it flies against the, the, the face of reason to what's actually ha is happening on the ground. The, the bill itself says that you know there's going to be a national threshold which the government is going to work out. And no local authority is going to be allowed to, to raise the threshold because if they find financial reasons. Hi, my name's Maria from Side Healthcare. Um, the question I'm going to ask is, is why is it so hard for local businesses that provide the service to get onto the tendering list and everything to do with the council? We should offer the care that we hope we're going to receive when we're old. The difference after the legislation will be that people in Southwark, take Southwark as an example, if they wish, will be able to make their choice. They won't have to go. There won't be a council list. Who's going to make sure that it's being policed properly 
and and the people are behind so still, yeah, is, still is, is, is the still there still actually will be a policing and complaints and inspections they're not going to be they're not going to be free that when you have paid off your mortgage yeah the risk of you having to pay 35000 pounds as a charge after you've died yeah is not going to stop you having an incentive if you want it to have your own home Simon, if you ever need to be able to engage with care providers and practitioners in your borough, in your constituency, please come have a chat with us because I know Oasis um, Care and Training Agency would be happy to organise something similar like this in the future. Um, so that offer is there if you need us. To Councillor Abdul and, and Adrian Ward, thank you very much for coming here today. My feelings are there is a need for more dialogue. I don't believe there is a strong enough infrastructure at the moment on dialogue between the 57 care providers in Suffolk and local social services. Perhaps we can have a chat about that and what we could do to enhance that a little bit better and get the communication going. But I think the more we talk about it, the more it forces us to think us through and to try and make something of this legislation rather than let it be something like the Health and Safety at Work Act, which for many years just sat up there and people ignored. And we don't really want that to happen. Okay, well, thank you for all for coming. A chance to network over lunch and thank you to our guests. Thank you.